that that zooms in. So let's get stuck into painting. What have we got here? Where is it? It is called Lucky Charm. Let's give that a shake. Shake, 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 shake. And hopefully this looks better on camera than the so-called yellow. So let's turn it around. Let's check out this new green. I'm gonna go get the other template. Oh, almost fell over. And we'll see if there's a big difference between the two because we've got a new green in the house. Got my cup of gel. And let's check out this new green. All right. Hello everyone, welcome back. We have got a new green. I have listened to the legends. G'day sunshine, hello from Canada mate. It is, what time is it now? 10 past 1 p.m. in Melbourne, Australia. Let's have a quick coffee. I've gone to the shop and got myself a new green. So if you are joining, we have a new green. Everyone said yesterday the old green, which, yes, you're right, this one looked very yellow. Here is the yellow, and I completely agree. Look at the difference now. So, new green, say goodbye. And let's add in the orange. There's our lanes. So let's paint and talk slot cars. And hopefully some of you will keep me occupied company whilst we're doing it. And I actually got my race cars from last night in the background. I went racing last night, so I'll have a talk about some of those. Awesome night of racing. i tell you what, it was the best night of racing. It was so much fun. 9, 10 p.m. That's not a bad time. Thanks for joining, mate. I'm normally in bed by about 10, so it's not a bad time. So let me just get this open. And I'll give you a quick look. We've got the China GP on today, so I'll be watching that. But now that looks green. Tell me if that looks yellow or green on camera, and I hope that looks green. So let's set up. Let's get painting. Let's get some painting done. Let's get some painting done. And I'm actually trying a new brush as well. It's a little bit different, this brush, it's a little bit thicker. Well, sorry, that's a lie. It's a little bit smaller, I should say. So let's see how this goes in. Cheers for watching Legends. We're just gonna, I'm going live again just to get this painting done. I'm hoping this new green looks better. Yeah, it does. It looks green. I think we're onto a winner. I think we are on to a winner. I think once we get going, you'll be able to see the difference. Oh yeah, you can already see it. You can already see the difference. Thanks for watching everyone. And whilst I'm painting, I'll talk about last night's racing. Had an absolute ball at, um, at one of the Melbourne clubs, home racing club. So we all get together. There's two major clubs that I know of in Melbourne, Phoenix and Oz. And I think last night's was the Oz one that I went to. And of course, I'll add this track to those clubs if they allow it in time so I can get the clubs to come and race here. Really good. And whilst I'm talking, let me go grab that the cars because these were the cars of choice last night. And I hope you can see those without reflection. This one here was the one that I raced. Oh, Frank, it was. Morning, Slucker Hub. Oh, Slucker Hub. So I actually got to race against. Please go subscribe. And last night from Slot Car Hub, the YouTube channel. The guy's incredible. He can really, really race. We had some really good racing. Uh, am I faster than him? Definitely not. But he was very, very good. The boys are really good. But I actually had a good old race with the slot that was built for me by the legend, Todd from America, who is probably one of the best drivers. Him and Ian are always neck and neck. And I've got some jab racing stickers. I actually took that for a test run around the track last night, and it did okay. I was actually surprised. I was very, very impressed. My NSR, whilst I'm talking, Mozzle Show, my NSR, and let me tell you, the NSR class was so much fun. The Aston Martin, that that is too quick. So 
first couple of laps, I really had to focus on the power going down. And that was more from having sensitivity. It was a gun. It was an absolute weapon. NSR make a beautiful car. So we're going to paint the new green today just to see if this actually looks different. And on camera, I think you can already see a massive difference. So did anyone go racing last night? Cheers for joining me. I know it's, again, just a... At four, so I'll be jumping off before then to watch. But I thought I'll go live whilst I'll put down the new colour. And here it is here, so you can see the colour code. That is the new one, get the fly away, versus the old one, which was that one. So we have a massive difference in colour. Still kept the high viz style, but that's our new our new green going down. So really cool. So I listened to you guys and girls, and you all said it looked yellow. I was racing last night, and the boys are saying, Trav, your track looks yellow. So guess what? I hope that's green enough. <laughs> Hope that's green enough. But now, really good, really good fun racing. Um, I don't believe I won overall. No, I didn't. I think I won a couple of heats. I, I believe the best I did or not was third overall in a race and a second. Um, I think I only won one or two heats for the night because the boys are quick. But it was good. You don't know. You don't have to win. Really, really good. Good bunch of guys. I think there was eight of us from memory. Um, really good. Had a good fun. If you are in Melbourne and you do want to get into club racing, home club racing, please reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with both clubs. My goal is next is to try and hire a hall. And if I can cart this track or we can set up a track and sort of get a, a big, big event on just to see, get some more numbers to turn up and have a really good day of racing. But it was really fun. Really, really fun. Beautiful track. And Steve is an awesome host as well. Good track, good host, good people. Really good, beautiful track. And I think last night was reverse because I've only raced it one, one way. Last night was the first time I've raced it. I'll call it reverse because the other time I went the other way. What have we got here? It looks heaps better? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I think it does look heaps better. Now that I see this being put down, the other green, yeah, you're right. It was very yellow. You're right. The chat wins. Yeah, it does look heaps better. Oh, Revo Slot. Had some Revo Slot racing last night. Um, let's talk about the new Corvette. Oh, my God. Out of the box, this thing is amazing. Pretty much just gave the tyres a little lick. And it was awesome. That was one of my one of my best races last night. And out of the box, this car. But funny I say that because... G'day, Reese. I hope you're doing well, mate. Um, we had another Corvette that... Because what Steve likes to do, he loves to put on multiple different cars during a heat, just have a bit of fun. And his Corvette out of the box compared to my Corvette, completely different cars. So you've really got to watch your Evos. You've got to... This hasn't even been touched We've done, are you interested? You- <laughs> Not interested today. Not interested. Are you- There's a personal joke going on. Uh, all I did with this is literally break the mirror off for lightness. No, I smashed it. Uh, and I literally put it down. So at Steve's track, he has a live piece of track that you put your car on, put it down on the tape, on the um, sandpaper. And sorry, guys, if I'm honest, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today. And zzz, move the tires around, give it a bit of a lick, and that was it. Onto the track, did some adjustments to my controller, which is the True Speed Mark II. Every car I had to adjust the controller. It, that's just what you have to do. And what this car really liked to do is, I couldn't I couldn't let go of the controller completely. I had to have some power on through the corners. So that that was me sort of figuring out the sensitivity. So I didn't have too much on, so I kicked out, and I didn't have not enough on that I bogged down and kicked the ass out as well. Um, really good fun racing. And then tomorrow, the Revo slot part two drops, which is – good evening, Guy Trap. It's good. The colour you're painting looks so green. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. It's green. We got green. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I, know, I did. I went to the Bunnings this morning, and uh, I went through all the colour chips – 
I still wanted to keep that fluorescent 80s look. And I agree. It actually looks really good with the orange as well. And that's just me. But I think, yes, you won't see the sides, but it gives you an indication of how, I guess, out of the box this color is. That looks cool. Um, I am going to float something with you guys, though, because I think I need to do another clear coat, and there's a reason why. I actually want to, after being at Steve's track last night, prior to him putting down all his final coats, Steve went around with some texture, uh, color, not texture as feel. New green looks great. It's nice having con... Yes, no, thank you, guys. I do appreciate it. Now that it's there, it makes a hell of a difference. Uh, but I'll, what my next issue is with the track, and we'll paint as I go, because this is going to take me 10 years, as you can see, the track looks very clinical. It is concrete. It looks like a brand new racetrack, which it is. But what I want to do now is do a second, third clear coat. But before I do that, get myself a nice brush, get myself some black, really dust it down. And then just around the corners where I, I'll mark a car and where I believe the cars are going to drive, I'm going to actually put some black marks so it looks like we have laid down rubber because this won't rubber in as in... Uh, look wise so it looks like the track's been used before so i might do that if it's not too much of a hassle uh so that's the next thing i'll probably do just to enhance but i can do that at any time that's that's a good thing without having the wood routed track you can stand down the top start again yep braids in the way but you know what you just cover it with tape uh talking braid i will be ordering some this week i think i've got 120 meters i'm going to be ordering uh from mr slot car really good stuff 6.3 in width, it's got backing of 3M tape, so you can just lay it down. How long is your track in width? Also, please. Uh, so length per lane from memory is 20 meters. I don't know what that is in foot, but it is, it's 20 meters. Each lane is 20 meters. The width of the table is about 2.4 meters. The length of the table, I think, was about 4.6 to 4.8. So really cool. Uh, and also yesterday, I had uh, a good friend of mine visit. We've actually had lately, we've had a really good uh, group of old friends. I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago that I used to knock around with and we all went our separate ways as you do as you get older and we've all rekindled and he popped in to check out the shed. And of course, firstly, he goes, you know, really, really cool shed. But he goes, where's your mezzanine? And I said, here we go. So we've got a plan for a mezzanine. He's really talking to it. I'm going to speak to the shed builder this week to see if I can organize one part of my roof, I'm going to quickly point that out, the back part up there, that back section between rail and the back of the shed, I'm going to request them to push that up a metre in the air. So then, let's move this car back so you can see it. So then I have the headspace to do a proper, and I mean proper mezzanine. So I can't lift the whole entire roof up across the shed but that three meter section, will, I'm going to inquire to see if I can either buy the parts, do it myself, or pay them to do it if it doesn't cost me 17 quadrillion slot cars. And let's do a mezzanine. So when people come, which this will be open for people to visit, uh, invite only, of course, uh, it's going to look epic. I can have the YouTube room upstairs again. We're just going to go full blown. Let's get the job done. Let's do it right and keep pushing the slot car community forward. Oh, let's keep going. I don't think this is actually going to look that good in the slot because I'm looking in there now and it's very dull. But if I'm honest, I think I might get some tape made up in the same color and then do a line of tape as well. And something funny, and I hope he's doing well. I believe he's on his flight now. Uh, Mike from Showish Slots, he was stuck in Melbourne yesterday because of his flight being cancelled to Europe. Of course, Dubai is underwater. And he sent me a video of this really cool, it looks like an ink pen. It's got a guide in it and you literally draws a line. So there's a guide with a pen on it and you literally put it in and it can't move, it's fixed. And you draw along and it drops down a nice, looks like an ink pen line. Of course, you've got to match the color, but that will put a line on the track. I kind of sort of wish I looked harder because that is a really easy way to do it. But if I'm honest, this is the quickest way for me to get the track up and going right now, instead of waiting, you know, six, seven days for a, a, a pen or a, another tool to get this done. Let's just get it done. Because I'm going to push and try and get this powered up in the next two weeks. 
weeks. The braid I will be getting next week. Come with me. Come with me, little kitties. Did race? Did race last night. Ravenhall five hundred stocker. I've got to try and make it down that way. I'm a big distance from Ravenhall, but I've got to get down that way. I want to visit those. Tra- I mean, that's if I'm invited. I don't know. <laughs> I've never really heard from them, but it'd be great to go over over the bridge and go see some uh, other tracks. So I promise I will get down there. I've got to do it. I've got to do it, man. It'd be really good to go see. And I want to go film as many locations as we can just to get the word out. Get the word out there, mate. Uh, Outlaw Slots today has the Carrera Fun Day. Because I went racing last night, I really couldn't go again. I 3D printed the slot tool hold worth a tree, but that's if you have a three. Yeah, 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 I know. I really got to look. There's, please don't think this is the best way to do everything because it definitely isn't. You all watch the channel, you know that it's pretty spontaneous. Let me just move that back. So we've got two of my race cars from last night coming along for the ride. This is incredible. This Corvette, and I know Steve's going to ride on here. No, it's not. It was incredible. Loved it. Loved it. And my Revo part two video comes out tomorrow where I take the Datsun, the, what was it? The Datsun, the um, Porsche GD1, and the Corvette for a spin around Outlaw Slots, smaller wood router track. Really small, but a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And again, out of the box, bog stock. I recommend doing all the updates to them if you really want to. There's lots of great channels out there showing you how to change tires, new motors. The only thing I'll recommend is every single car that you buy, any car that you buy, whether it's Carrera, Scale Electric, Slot It, um, Avant Slot, whatever it is, it's very easy to get yourself a nice little bit of sandpaper, sticky tape it to your track, fine grit, turn your controller on, hold your car up, and just go zzz and keep it as keep it as balanced as you can, and always and I say always true your tires. And that's not proper truing. That is literally giving them the lick, and it saves me seconds. Like you just can't compare it. Every car you get, you should do that. If you don't have a tire truer, doesn't matter. Any kind of tire conditioning is is beneficial. Just don't hold it on the edge, or don't try and when you're doing it. Try and rock as hard as you can or push down hard because you will get cuts, grooves, uneven surfaces. You want to try and keep it as flat as you can, but as simple as getting some sandpaper that is stuck to your track and given each tire, say you get 10 cars, do it 10 times. One, two, three, next car. One, two, and that's all you need to do. And you'll get the performance, more performance out of them. Yeah, spoken like a true professional non-race car. Revo slot so good. Oh, yeah. Revo slot. Oh, your brother's inbox me. Hold on. What's your brother saying? What's he saying? You'll see plenty of color. Oh, thank you, mate. Well, I hope you, yeah, you, you actually will because you're going to see the sides as well. Um, and let me tell you, the Scriven brothers, and, and let's call him dad, dad Scriven, uh, really competitive. Good, the boys can drive. We've got some really talented drivers in Melbourne and Australia. It is exciting to see how how even home club racing is competitive, fun competitive. Probably couldn't film last night because we're all having a bit too much fun. Alcohol involved for me. (laughs) But, um, yeah, it was awesome. So much fun. So much fun. Say it with me. So much fun. So, anyone, the Travis near out of the box river slot was very competitive against these. I didn't think about that. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So, we all know Steve can drive. It's Steve's track. Steve is very quick. And for Steve to have a car that doesn't perform for him, obviously something's gone wrong more with the car than it has with him because Steve can really drive, really drive. And I believe he was up, he got up, he works very odd hours. So he was up early yesterday morning, about 3 a.m. I actually got a message from him, funny bugger. And he was working on his Corvette out of the box, rebuilt it. I believe he did some axle work to it, which we'll talk about that in a tick. Uh, proper truing of the front and rear tires, adjusting the chassis so there's flex, um, all the stuff you would do if you want to go competitive racing. We pull mine out of the box, give a little tickle of the tires. I haven't even touched 
the screws, haven't even touched them. And this performed, I mean, I didn't get the drive, and I'm not saying I'm a better driver, and I'm definitely not, but I did not get the drive Steve's Corvette, but it appeared that it wasn't performing as well as mine. That was just freshly out of the box. Reverse like NSR and scale order, I find all absolutely ripped right out of the box with a little, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, try, try the, Try the tire scuff with every car. I don't, I don't, I don't mind if it's, if it's, um, if it's, uh, and and look, there's been a lot of people have asked me offline lately. What do I believe is a toy car? Is a, is a hobby car? And of course, there's a bit of a topic going on at the moment. I've been directly asked offline. Um, it's really open to your, what you believe is. Uh, my opinion on it is, I mean, I can align my thoughts with RC racing. Um, these, these are not toys. I don't care about price. Price doesn't worry me. It's more the expectations you have on that car once you've purchased it. Now, let's use Carrera, Scalatric, and SCX as your base. I will call them toy or not hobby grade. The reason that is they're a basic chassis. They're a beautiful body. Um, everyone knows that I love, I love the toy brands. I absolutely think they're, they're essential. But they're not expected to be updated out of the box. They're meant to go on your plastic track and run as good as they can, and they normally do on your plastic track or wooden track, whatever. That's your toy, that's your, we'll call that the RTR, ready to run. What I consider a hobby, a hobby grade, is something that the manufacturer normally states or lets you know that you may need some adjustments. And with Revo Slop, they highly recommend you rebuild the chassis, you take it apart, it's metal, try and get it flat. This car is meant to be played with, tinkered with, and also, I guess, built better to perform. It's, it's, got, it's got potential to be adjusted, where the toy brands are, are as simple as that. They're just ready to run out of the box. That's what, that's what we believe. Put price aside. I don't care about price. Pricing to me comes down to what the manufacturer wants to ask. Why is Revo so expensive? Why is Slot it? I mean, Slot it's actually not that expensive, but why is Revo more than a Carrera car or a, um, you know, a Scalatric car? Well, you'll probably find that there is more work that goes into it in different sort of ways. Uh, my personal opinion is it's, it's a hobby. It's a hobbyist grade. And it's, but it's, it's open for everyone. Some of these cars, if you don't tinker with them, won't perform well. I was very lucky with the Revo. And if I didn't adjust my... My controller, and here's another, here's another part to the hobby side of things. If I had a standard controller without any braking, out any coast, out, out without any sensitivity control, this Corvette would be very hard for me to drive with a Carrera controller out of the box. And, that, and I'll stand by that. Yes, I'd probably perform well, but add those options to it, it's a machine. And I'll, I'll go back to Tamiya. I used to race RC cars. And we look at a TT01, which is the pretty much the base model chassis for, for Tamiya, which is still available now. It's still out there now. It is their budget chassis that if you buy, it's their cheapest, their entry level. It's still a hobby because you can actually buy aftermarket parts for it and there is potential to upgrade it. But if you want to get into the hobby grade stuff, you will then jump into, back in my day, a TA05, a TT02, a, T -T a TB02, which was an older version of it. There was other options, or then you jump up to an X-Ray, which was a, a higher performing, more adjustable, more add-ons, lighter weight, um, pretty much a performance version of a standard RTR chassis. And that's how I consider the, the hobby side of things. But I would take it a step further. If I go to my local Kmart, which is like, I mean, I believe everyone knows what Kmart is. I can get myself a $40 RC car, which is a toy, off the shelf, 2.4 gigahertz controller, but there is no room for improvement, no room at all. So that's where you start looking at the, the toy side of it, in my opinion. Could I be right? Definitely not. Could I be wrong? Probably am. <laughs> but I have been asked numerous times this week, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? But is there, is there a right answer? Not really, no. So whatever you think it is. If price is, if price is a, a reason that you believe it's, it's now classed as a hobby, it's probably got a, 
a good reason behind that because yes, you start paying over a hundred dollars for a car, any any kind of I guess collectible, and might might bump it up to the next category. But I don't think it's just one thing. It has to be a multiple of things that make it hobby grade. My opinion only, though, of course. I know people are going to be like, "Oh, that's his thoughts." Let's share that around and rip that apart. But of course, but please do that. If you're going to rip anyone apart, rip me apart. <laughs> Leave everyone else alone. What's the chat getting on to? Yes, it's pretty cool. When I seen your name, I had to give some. Oh, one, three, two. Thanks, man. I'll just a quick look at the uh, comments just to say good day. Still early here in Cali. I was about to give. I found Trevor, so it was cool. Oh, thanks, Anthony. I appreciate it, mate. No, thanks, guys. I know it's probably a weird time in America. What's Cali? It's 8.35 p.m. in LA. I've actually got LA time on my on my watch because I talk to Marco a lot from Electric Dreams. So I, I like to keep – and I've got a lot of – I say I call them friends from when I raced in Cali, which let me tell you. Let's talk about that race, which is this car was one of those. I wish if I can turn back time now, I had more time to take it serious and I probably would have. But being the first time in LA, I know I had no chance of winning. Like I'm not trying to, I guess, talk about if I would have done better. I would have done better, but no chance of winning. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish I had, I had the qualification day, the practice day to myself like everyone else did. But I was just crazy filming everything, doing the podcast, meeting people. It was just, oh, my God. Probably hear the planes going past. So I actually should really get some on top because we're going to need a little bit for the braid. I love the camaraderie with you guys. It's awesome. Yeah, look, it is. The The hobby has got a very good culture. There is still, um, I, I speak openly, there is still a very old culture. Um, it's getting better, I believe, with sharing information. You know, how did you get your car so fast? Even the boys last night, if if you need help, they're definitely there to say, oh, Trav, try this. Or, you know, if I could see a car that on the track had too much braking and I could see that it was upsetting a car, whilst the driver's driving, whether it means nothing to them or whether it's right or wrong, I would yell out, uh, check your braking or something. Because you can tell you, that that's getting better where everyone wants to do better. And I'll give you an example last night of really good culture with the boys. Um, and I see this a lot with racing. The last race, I think it was the Revo race, I potentially, I came second. I could have won that, very competitive. But um, Slot Car Hub had to do pretty much... I think you had to get 24 laps to beat me at the end. And I was marshalling. So he only came off once or twice. And I think t the first time was near me. And I grabbed that car as quick as I could to throw it back on the track because I knew he had a chance to, to, to beat me. He destroyed me. I think he got 27 laps because he's just on fire. And, you know, if, I'm, if you're helping an, uh, an opponent beat you, well... And they would do the same for me and vice versa. We all just wanted each other to, to go faster, whether or not you're going to lose the race. And it was awesome. He killed me. I think he beat me by five laps. Really, really good. Awesome driver. Not too sure about those pink motors, though. I think the boys will know what that means. But those pink motors have got to go. I think those pink motors have got to go. So the next step on this, of course, you probably won't see me paint at all today. And I will try and go live randomly because I've got filming to do. I've got stuff to do, of course, around the shed. Um, I'm going to try and go to Outlaw Slots this week again. And so the next major step on this track will be ordering the power supply. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go three power supplies, which is very overkill. Like, I don't need to, but it's going to look cool. Let me move you closer. The three power supplies... Will, will be for each driver. Do I need it? No. But I think this being a showpiece for a new track maker, and it's not the only one. I want to clear some air here. Um, again, I got inboxes yesterday about other. There is, there is many, well, not many. There's a couple of really good track builders out there. And let me, let me name them. Mr. Tracks is the original. Uh, reach out to him. He's Melbourne-based. 
Really good, really, really good. Of course, you've got Frank's tracks, which it won't be called that, but let's call it Frank's tracks. He's new to offering his services, but not new to cutting up a track. You've also got um, tracks by slot car tracks by Andrew, which I believe is still in the Canberra area. Awesome tracks as well, all different. Like we've got New South Wales, Canberra, and Melbourne. Um, I am supporting and helping Frank at the moment. And but will I not want to support and help others? Definitely not. Like, not every, not one supplier can build all the tracks. It's all about breaking. I love the. Yeah, it's all about. It is. It is. Uh, the slot car daddy. It definitely is about breaking. But you also got to remember some of the cars. And let's bring him back into contention. And I, I probably can speak not professionally, but I'll, I'll speak knowledgeably on this car because I've had some experience with it over the last week on how to set this car up out of the box. I'm not talking about doing any updates because it just goes to show with Steve's car, with a fair few hours spent on it, sometimes you, and this wouldn't have been Steve's fault, but sometimes you can go a bit too far and the car doesn't like it. The modifications are really good, but it just does not suit that car. But you do the same to a Revo Porsche or a Revo uh, whatever, and it likes those modifications that you've done. Funny as it is, it's just how, it's just how cars are. This particular car out of the box took me a while to get the braking down pat. How much I need to brake? Does the car need to coast into the corners? Does it need a little bit of throttle through the corners? Because that keeps the car um, settled. Because with the Revos, no magnet. You can't have magnet. I know that. But I don't run a magnet in these. And I find they're very easy to settle the rear end. Looks amazing when the rear end's kicking out, but you're not gaining any speed. Uh, looks really cool. But typically, you're not going faster, typically, because there is some instance where you could go faster. Uh, so with this one, it took me a lot of control with the controller to set up the braking, the coast, and the sensitivity. And if you don't have a professional controller, I will recommend True, True Speed because they've taken my driving to the next level. They really have, and I've bought my True Speed. I've not sponsored or been given anything from them. Uh, my driving has now stepped up because I've got control over the car. I really have. Uh, the SCP2 is really good, which is my old controller. And let me let me go get those while I'm talking so you can see visually what I'm talking about. If I can find the SCP2, because I have moved it. It might be inside, actually. Bear with me. Let's put this one down. So it's a bit of a paint and talk. How's that? Let's put that one down. And I do have an SCP2 floating around. I'm just gonna find it. Stop looking everyone, I found it. Because we can talk controllers. And this is, I'm not a professional, please don't think I'm telling you how to suck eggs, but this is what I've found. So we have, let's move Revo. We have the SCP2. Let's leave him there so you can see it whilst I paint. And we've got the Mark, the MK2, which uh, they're not the same price. I think these are about 200 from memory. And this, I think, was 245 or something. I can't remember. I did pay for them both separately. Uh, I've been using that religiously since about 2019, I think it was. So pre COVID. And that was my first real jump up to a proper controller with, with controls because I was doing digital as well. So this has got digital functions. Um, I know people are going to say, you know, Defalco other brands, there is a lot of really great brands out there and I can't speak on them because I haven't used them all. I've driven with them, but I haven't used them enough to say, oh yeah, which one's better? That's not about this. Uh, out of these two, for me, this one's better because I find the adjustments with the trigger and I'm very big on trigger feel. It sounds stupid, but you can actually, to me, I, it feels like I get feedback from the car because there's a striker bar and it gives me that bit of tension. And I know if I just... And this is very sensitive. I've got it set up. If I just give it a squeeze, I know how fast the car should be going. With this, you can do a spring mod on it. As you can see, it's on off. You do have travel, but there is no feel. It is just, I call it a ghost controller. I just can't feel what the car is, is doing. I don't know because I don't know where I'm. With the striker, you can kind of feel a spot and hold it. This, it is very sensitive. Still very fast controller for me. This has stepped my game up. But I will say, if I had the money, I would have purchased the Apex, which is pretty much this with a control box. Um, one of the races last night had it. We call him NASA. <laughs> How's the flight going, NASA? 
Uh, and I spent a lot of time with that in Newcastle. I used mics and I got really fast with that. At the start, I'm thinking, what's all these? What? Why? But this, those fine adjustments, I could hold the trigger on and it would keep the wheels spinning or turning. And it's like I never had to brake. But because I was just doing <laughs> it's like a hub, I was just doing the adjustments. I had that minute control. It makes a massive difference. Uh, some people just need braking um, and they're really fast. But this is for me. I'm speaking on behalf of how I drive. Also, I'm a dancer. I, I consider myself as a driver a dancer. And even Steve picked up on that last night. If I'm out on my own and I'm in the zone, I like to do the, you'll see people do the, the dance because they're actually moving with the car. But I also like to sit with someone and dance with them. And that's sometimes how I get a faster lap. I do make more mistakes. But even Steve said, you know, once I caught up with him and we danced together, you kind of start getting a better a driving, driving rhythm. But it's also unsettling too because if they come off, well, guess what? You're going to come off. But it was, I tell you, this is the best hobby. And if you are watching and you are a slot car fan, which you probably are, Please tag your friends who either do RC or model collecting and go racing with them. Yes, six hours was a long night. And by the end of it, I was tired. I was happy to go home. I didn't want to see another slot car because I was done. Woke up this morning smiling, going, let's do it again. It's like everything. Moderation, it is awesome. But I tell you, <laughs> I can't wait for this to get up and going. Um, so really exciting. It was really good. I had a good night. And it does help when you've got a good crowd. And the crowd's really helpful. Like Steve's got a lot of cars and, you know, I don't think you'll give it to everyone. Say, so, yeah, smash this car. But if, if, you, if you are missing a car for a class, you're guaranteed someone's got a car there for you to have a play with. Um, me and Slot Car Hub are very the same. We're collectors. So even me losing the mirror on this, which I've got it, but I've lost a mirror. Yeah, that really, uh, yeah, I wasn't happy. Can I just read the comments quickly? Let me have a quick look. Yeah, just gonna quickly read the comments. Active aero on a slot car would be crazy, mate. Wing cars. If you'll go watch a wing car, I use DRS with my Carrera set. Awesome. I'm a Scalatric guy, Travis. Love all the brands. I like out of the box fun. Uh, the slot car daddy. We need more box fresh racing. You still need to lick the tires, and I don't mean physically lick them. Well, you can, but use your finger. Uh, but you still need to give your tires a tickle, which is simply putting some sandpaper on the track tape it down, pull your controller and give it a bit of a dance. Not professional, but it's better than nothing. And I, just, I think minimal adjustments to the car because, and do it across the board. Carrera, oh, I'm going to read the comments. Carrera, you know, NSR, what's it all about braking? What do we got? It was good. Yeah, no, it was good. It was a good night. 35 people who like watching paint dry. New fetish. I might start a new, uh, no, I don't have one. I was about to say, I might start a new OnlyFans. I don't actually have OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's watching what do you mean you might start a new one but no it was a lot of fun a lot of fun uh, I was going to record it but that was kind of my chill out time I, really, I will record it one day because I think people need to see the underground racing in Melbourne uh, but last night was purely a night for me to go out and just have fun with the boys and let our hair down and let me tell you the language I was using wouldn't have been suited for a, for, for a review or a, uh, a video so yeah a lot of fun. And I think sometimes you just need a night off just to do it your own. Put the camera down and go for it. But I'm going to get into, I've got to get back into racing more because I think we can do some good stuff with the racing. Um, the Revo one, I'm going to take very seriously. The NSR one, I haven't decided if I'm going yet. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of stuff happening that I'm just trying to fill, fill the gaps, but I do want to go there. I still have to pop in there and actually film it. Uh, Mr. Slot Car at the moment is doing an extension to the track. That is what the Globe Race League was all about. Stock Carrera cars only. As with one to one racing, new cars race that your own. Yes. G'day, uh, John. Please go check out Fast Sports. Um, very, very good at everything. I'm going to give you a plug here, John, because you are very good at everything. But I, I absolutely love when you're making your cars, I love when you're doing your modeling. Uh, I think that's a, an art that I, I, I will get into. I, I can do it, not as good as anyone, but I think that's a time poor thing on my behalf, but absolutely love watching when you're building, creating, even discussing 
what your next plan is. Worldwide chat, I try and pop onto that a lot. So please, guys, jump over and follow Fast Sports. He's one of the OGs. He's been around for a long time. He knows a lot more than me. Let's face it, I don't know a lot. <laughs> I just tell you all the bad stuff. No, don't get a new controller. That's what it's all about. So are we liking the green? Does it actually look green now? Because do we like the green orange? I think that's cool. I mean, that's me, but I've got bad taste, I've been told. We, yes, we don't have to film everything. So if you're interested, let me know if you want to try any more. Oh, if I'm interested. If I'm interested. Uh, yes, I'm interested. So please send me a link where I can grab all this, and I would love to do a review on one of your uh, resin kits. I think it would be great. Porsche would be nice. Let's go Porsche together. But no, no, definitely, please go jump over and check it out. Uh, the, world, the worldwide slot card chat pretty much is the original, to my knowledge, online. Let's call it a podcast because that's what it would have started as. And now there's a lot of branch offs, which is perfect. We need options, but please go over and check it out. It's a very deep conversation. The guys can get technical, but they're open to questions. Um, it's run by Zoom and obviously then ran onto YouTube. So you can join the Zoom. You don't need a microphone. You don't need a camera. Uh, you can actually ask questions via the chat. And the boys the boys will answer as good as they can. If they can find the answer, which I'll be very surprised, uh, which the answer will be there, they'll get it for you. And, yeah, they're the originals. And I like to pop in from time to time and say good day. And it's just good going back to the roots where these boys have been doing it for such a long time. Such a long time. So please jump over and support that. I will put it on the news, I think, this week. I've been slack on the news. I've been busy painting lines. I was going to say doing lines, but it might get demonetized. <laughs> Let's do lines. So if I can make a recommendation, grab a – don't be scared and grab yourself a uh, – grab yourself a good controller. Whatever the brand may be is, do some research. I've made my recommendations. I highly recommend uh, any of the true range – uh, true range, true speed range. You don't have to go my one. Um, this is, it's expensive, but it's worth its weight in gold. It's daunting to learn. There's plenty of people out there that can help, including my channel. I will put some stuff on it. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I don't give tips and hints and, you know, enough. I don't consider myself an expert in the field of slot car racing or slot cars. I'm just a content creator I, I'm here to help push the hobby but I also will probably start giving my thoughts and opinions on on how to do stuff but it's not always going to be the right way it's more of a confidence thing you don't want to tell someone I oh, know you have to do this because you, this will be the reason why no I can't do that because I don't know if my way is the best way but that I have seen an uptake in my in my driving I wish I had that in America oh I wish, I wish, but I'm going to talk to uh, Electric Dreams and let's see if um, if I'm going back this year. Also, my uh, that slot car guy, HO car, which I haven't been pushing for sale, there's reasons behind that, and I, I won't get into it yet, uh, but I still have some. I'm actually sending one to a man that I was lucky to send. I'm actually going to talk about this because I was very lucky. I am very lucky in this hobby that I've got to do a couple of really awesome things. Now, Scott owns Electric Dreams. Uh, very, very nice man. Um, you'll see in the video, I get picked up in a Maybach. So I won't talk about financials, but he's he's done well for himself. He's a very smart businessman. Uh, and he has the museum at his house. I do have a part two of that, but I also felt a little bit, I don't know if I want to share his personal life. It's been shared before on camera. So I thought, that's why I haven't released that video yet because it's more like I experienced it. You know, I'm not going to show anyone any difference. There's a lot of videos out there and I kind of wanted to enjoy it just with, you know, him and, and a couple of the close guys that were there. Anyways, I'm actually sending him one of my Porsches as a gift to say thank you because he, he said some stuff to me. I was, I was allowed to sit in the car. He picked me up and drove me. Share and share alike, fellas. Yes. He drove me from, uh, I don't know what the, the town was in L.A., where Electric Dreams is, but we drove together in his car from from there to uh, Hollywood Boulevard, which is where he pretty much lives. He lives, you know, in Hollywood. 
And the conversation is this sitting there with this guy that sort of, he's, he's done a lot, he's seen a lot, you know, it's a man that people would pay a lot of money to sit beside. And here I am, little old Trav, sitting there, they've flown me over to, to go racing and just having a discussion with him, getting his, you know, his thoughts on the slot car world, um, even some of his thoughts on racing. He's not a racer when it comes to slot cars. He, he loves slot cars, but he's not really into the racing side of it, yet he collects real race cars. Very interesting to talk to. Uh, he shared a quote with me, which is stuck with me today. That's on the description of the channel. You'll see his quote. And it actually stuck with me. Um, so I, I did, I did, yeah, I was very fond of him. And I felt, I felt like if I sent him a gift or if I sent someone in that position a gift, does it look like I'm wanting something back? Definitely not. But as an appreciation to, let's just say, a guy that has everything, I thought I'll share with him something that I've created as a, as a gift to him just to say thank you because I can imagine that he had a lot of people wanting to have his time for the wrong reasons. Um, and I thought, no, it's probably time I give back to him. So hopefully, if you ever get to a tour of that, you might see my car in his museum. I don't expect it to be in there because it's not from the 60s, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. But it's just cool that he's like, yes, please, can you send me one? And he was very happy to receive it. And it's going to be in his museum with him, um, which is really cool. And, and that's, you know, to me, I had to do that. And I'm very grateful that he accepted it. Really cool man, uh, seriously, really cool. Again, not paid or sponsored by him. <laughs> but I thought whilst we're painting, let's get deep. Let's get deep. Let me move these because I'm going to move you guys closer. Uh, never underestimate the effects you have on others. Uh, that's, and that's true, mate. That is, that is definitely true. And that's negative and positive, um, especially in my line of work. And I, I had a lovely chat with a lady this morning at our hardware shop when I was buying the paint. And um, she recognized me because I've been going in there a lot. And we had a good old chat. You know, what are you buying the paint for? And I told her about the channel. Really lovely. And then we spoke about my old career. And you can just see speaking to people and actually listening to them. And, you know, she, she had stuff going on in her life as well. Uh, it was amazing just to, you know, you can see there's an in, a human interaction there that actually meant something. And I'm no, you know, huggy, huggy, la, la let's go hug a tree together person. But it was really, it, it's just nice that there's a lot of people out there that want to listen. Uh, she gave me some advice because she was a lot older than me, um, not in a rude way, but she's like, it was really good. So yes, the effect on people, um, just think about what you're doing and saying. And I, I should listen to my own words because, you know, I can be a, a right a right prick sometimes myself and it's, you know, I try not to be, but I try to do better. But that's enough of the mushy stuff. Let's go back to talking whatever we're talking what have we got on today all right i'm just gonna quickly show you back uh, it's a lot of fun at electric dreams went there oh it was, it's the best everyone has a story that is worth listening to oh mate you're right everyone but that's the thing uh, one thing i've learned and of course after being a cop as well everyone has their own issues not i don't know any person in life that is walking through life without having their own personal issue and you might not even know yet, again, just treat them, treat them as, yeah, I don't know. Everyone's got something going on. Now, if you look at Instagram and, um, you know, I wouldn't say fake places because I'm on there, but don't always take the picture as what it is. There's always something going on in the background. A big saying that we say over here, I don't know if it's in America as well, but we always say the grass is always greener, but just as hard to mow. And it's true. You look over your fence, oh, that's a nice garden. They're doing okay, but I guarantee you, he's pushing the same or she's pushing the same lawnmower as you. Sometimes it might be even heavier. So, yeah, you never know. But I think the green is coming up really good. I'm going to go to about here, to the yellow. How are we going on time? 49, 27 people. Cheers. And I'm going to go up the other end and keep doing the green. But I think we've got our colours. I just want to get this thing finished. I can't wait. Uh, let's talk power supply. So I am going to run three power supplies uh, off Amazon. I'm going to try and link this all in the video when I sort of release. It won't be a full doco, but it'll be showing you what I've done uh, just so people know what I'm using on the track. So, yeah, there's going to be three power supplies, one per driver. That is overkill, I know, but it's going to look cool as shit. Uh, we're also going to <clears throat> have only one join. After talking with the boys last night, we are going to run – the full 20 metres per 
braid line the whole way around and have one join. It's not big enough in, in my knowledge as well as the boys last night after we discussed to have any join in it. And the track that I raced on last night, which I think was 26 meters, it's a bigger track, four lane, doesn't have a join. It runs one power supply, you know, good quality track as this is. Um, if you lay the braid properly, pro properly, <laughs> properly, if you lay the braid pr properly, you're going to get the effect that you need. So we're going to go one join, one join only. Um, I did have, I will mention him because I want people to support people who are trying to support me. Uh, Outlaw Paints I work very closely with. He's an Aussie. He's got his own YouTube channel, uh, Aussie Modeler. Please go check it out. Really good bloke. He's an Aussie bloke. And he actually, after yesterday's live, he reached out to me and said, Trav, um, he wanted to do something with the track for me. And of course, in return for promotion, which that's what this is all about. This track is used as a piece of art. Uh, people come to the to the sh to the uh, the shed, and they're going to see brands, and that's what I think big brands don't understand is this: the people are going to see some stuff, uh, and even for the the smaller channels, give them some stuff to review because it's an honest reviews. If you, if you're making a shit product, you got to say, you know, let's fix this. But anyways. He wants to do something with the track, so we'll be naming a corner for him. So it's going to be Outlaw Paints Corner, and I'm gonna I've got a fancy idea on how to display his paints, but um, yeah, I've got a really cool idea. But no, he, he was really cool. He was really cool. And again, I, I think naming the corners giving people opportunity to have their brand. Uh, other channels will have their stickers on here um, to show support to them. People will be coming to race here. So it's going to be an, an evolution that's going to always happen. Oh, actually, I've got some other cool news to share. Hold on a tick. Let me just quickly read the comments. 29 people. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And thank you all for the last lives. The last five lives, we're averaging over 1,000 views, which doesn't sound like a lot, really. But for lives, for my channel, it's incredible. Uh, afternoon. G'day, Scott. Afternoon, mate. Thanks for jumping in. Let me have a quick look. Fast forward. You need... You need Weed and feed. <laughs> well, in Australia, we, I don't, yeah, I, we're not, I'm not a weed smoker over here, but it's funny how it's accepted everywhere. And look, I say go for it. So let's have a quick look. I have an episode about my use of Professor Motor Controls. Please check that out. That's for Fast Sports. Fast Sports, please, if you're still there, link your channel in, in here, please. Put a link. All grass looks great from the distance. It's only when you look closely that you see, yes, the brown spots. Much nicer green. Sounds good. Yeah, much nicer green. Oh, the green is heaps good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what was I saying? Refresh me. What was I saying? Oh, something really cool coming up. I'm going to try and branch out and help. Uh, of course, being Australian, I'm trying to help promote some Australian uh, shops, but not just normal shops because we've got hobby shops as well that stock uh, slot cars and Metro Hobbies, which is a really good hobby shop in Melbourne. There's one in Box Hill, and there's one in the city. And I used to go there all the time. Um, actually, I can, I've got a really good police story to tell about that, but I probably won't because it's quite a sad story. But anyways, it has something to do with, with that shop because I was meant to be there at a certain time. Anyways, uh, they tagged me in a video not long ago, I believe. Was it? No. No, that was Hearn's Hobbies. So let's talk about Hearn's Hobbies first. I might be jumping on. I've got to reach out to them again and be doing a review on behalf of Hearns, at Hearns. We've been trying to do this for some time. Of course, I went overseas. So you might see me, which is Hobby Man as well. You might see me do a, re a review for them at their shop on their behalf. Really cool. And the same, this message held for review. Let me have a quick look. I just want to re review this message. Uh, show, there we go. Let me show that. I hope that worked. Uh, thank you, moderators. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, they did. They used to sell, yes, SEX. Uh, yes, so I remember when they got that. So SEX was in 2021 when they got the, I believe not the, they got the distribution rights to it. But unfortunately, I won't lie, it didn't sell very well. So I actually spoke to the owner at the time when he got that distribution. And the channel was a lot smaller. It's still small now, but it was a lot smaller when it comes to Melbourne-based. Uh, and I don't think... Yeah, I think there's a lot of work to be done with SEX in Australia. I, I've reached out to SEX to say, hey, we need to get some stuff on the channel because we had your product here, you know, since the, the new days, the advance and, and some of the current stuff. 
we probably need to show more of it so we get interest. Because let me tell you, and this is a segue, the SEX brand is pretty good. Yes, it's it's a sub-brand sort of of, and I won't get into the, the history because if I'm honest, I'm, I'm not au fait with the whole history, but you do see Galatric cars under their name, Super Slot. But they do their own stuff as well. They've got some cars come out this year that Scalatric don't have. So, and their digital system, which I've never used, can handle nine cars. Nine cars. That's the most so far for a off-the-shelf digital system. So they did have SEX, but of course, you know, if your stock isn't selling at the price it should, and you have to discount it to get rid of it, there's no point on getting the stock again. And I don't think it was ready for SEX to take off again here. So we do need to, I think, as a community, if you want it, the only way we're going to probably get it in the future is we, if we get it on a channel in Australia, whether it's through me, Husey, Slot Hub, um, you're going to have to, we're going to have to rally together and see if we can get some review copies because I have spoken to them and they're pretty interested. So let's see, because I'm a big believer in that brand. But also, let's go back to the other story with um, Metro Hobbies. So Metro Hobbies were doing a review on a slot car, I think, on Instagram, and I tagged them and said, guys, it'd be great to come in and do a review with you. And they've like, yes, please, let's work this out, blah, blah, blah. So once this track is done and I've got some free time because it's in the city, I will go in and uh, chuck on the old That Slot Car Guy t-shirt and you'll probably see me do a couple of reviews for them on their channel and their socials as me, but for the slot car community. So that's pretty cool. Something different. Something different. Really cool. And I've, I've wanted to do that for a while because it's, you know, it helps. We, I am targeting slot car people right now, but we should be really targeting others because we need to bring other hobbyists over to us as a, as a complementary hobby, not just their only hobby. Add this to your hobby list. I mean, I collect diecast cars. I still do. Not as much. I, I mostly hunt for Porsche. Wonder why. Uh, but I still have a diecast car fetish as as a sub brand or sub hobby. But this is my passion. Uh, RCs. If I could get back into RCs, I would. But that's very expensive, and I do need space. And if I got back into RCs, you probably wouldn't see the shed expanding like it is. So, yeah, I've stayed with this. I have stayed with this. But I've got to say, last night's racing. I got the camera out for a bit just to film a short or two. Uh, the cars look so incredible on track. We are so lucky at the moment with the quality of cars that we are getting. Uh, and one of my favorite races last night, and we raced NSR times two. We raced the F1 86 to 89. We raced the GT, um, GT class. So that's two NSR races we had. We also raced um, Revo. And what else did we race? And we raced slot at Group C. So that's four races we had, four classes. And we also did BTCC for Scala Trip, which I did not have. That was by far one of my favorite races last night. Yet yeah, out of the box, it, it needs a lot of work, but that was, they're fun. They are fun. And you can race those cars. Like you can race Carrera, you can race Scala Trip. Just lower your expectations compared to one of the hobby grade cars. Probably get shut down for saying that. Let me move you guys. Let's move over here. It is extremely hot in the shed. So I'm going to put you guys down, open up the shed door because it's very hot in here. I've got the heater going and I am sweating. Actually, I might uh, change over to a T-shirt because it is very warm. And we'll keep soldiering on because we've pretty much got the front straight almost finished. And let's just open up this a little bit. I haven't gone anywhere, guys. I'm just opening up the gate because it's very hot in here. So you might see me go live spontaneously because I do want to try and get this done, but it is very lonely. <laughs> so if you do see me pop up now and then, don't feel uh, obliged to join, but I will be doing something with the track. Once the braid comes, it's game on. We're going we're gonna to be pushing really hard because... That where did I put my where did I put my paintbrush? 
Ah, and this, I did wear this yesterday, but it's, I've got a couple of these t-shirts because I know someone's going to write to me, Ugh, brother, Ugh, were you wearing that yesterday? No. This is a new one. Let me just move this coffee out of the way. And let's keep painting. So yeah, we've got lots going on in the slot shed. We've got lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. While we're doing it, let me get out an NSR car that I raced last night. And let's put that on track whilst we're talking. We are talking slot cars, so let's... Ugh. Yes, mate, I won't lie. When I was choosing the colour this morning, I would have been there for half an hour just staring at all the greens. And I would have picked up three or four different greens last night, just uh, this morning, sorry, just going, yes, no, yes, no. And this was the one I picked up and went, yep. Yeah. And I know someone said, and I'm going to show this in a tick, and sorry, I know this is riveting live, riveting live session. I'm going to quickly show you something. That dolly over there, let's go have a look at that actually, because I've got the two greens here. So someone said, this is the green that I should be doing, which I haven't color matched. I can't color match. So I did try and find the in-between green. Yes, this one's darker. That one's lighter. We didn't have that green, but that was the com compromise. And I actually went into the same hardware shop, found the trolley and took all the cards. They probably thought I was stealing stuff back and forward to try and match. So if we get rid of that one, it actually is fairly close. Keep in mind, this is on a card, low sheen. That's a high gloss finish. So I try to get as close as I can because someone said yesterday, that's the green. I said, okay, that's the green. All right, let's keep going. And it's friggin' hot in here. That looks good, it looks good. 27, you guys are crazy. Uh, see, thanks, Fast Sports. I appreciate it, mate. Let me just quickly read the comments because it's very rude of me not answering some stuff. Much nicer green. Thank you, Scotty boy. They used to sell, very cool. Hope you're having a good night. Thanks, Matt. Hope you have a good night too, mate. Uh, good night all, I'm over nice in the morning. And all, thank you, mate, I appreciate it. Uh, Fast Sports, please go follow him, subscribe. Really good stuff, really good stuff. Could you shout out my homeboy coach, Larry Nasser? He's sick in hospital. Ah, Larry Nasser. I hope you're doing well, mate. Good luck. Um, I hope everything goes well at hospital. Get well soon. And that's coming from Nanorta Swing Set. I hope I said that right. The car are very nice. Beach set, awesome. So very sticky tires. I can't wait to see your cars run on that. Travis, do you mean run or fly off the track? <laughs> no, I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be cool. Let's put that there. So we did race this. Let's talk cars. NSR, stop it. This thing, it's not called the Aston Martin. I think it's called the AGV, they call it or something. Hold on. ASV. The AS, ah, oh, Tupperware Pete. Uh, I'll talk about that in a tick. Tupperware Pete just sent me, in, I think, a um, subscribe. Funny. I follow this guy on TikTok. He, he sells Tupperware. And he's passionate like I am about slot cars. You can see him. That's all he does is sell Tupperware. So I found his, slot car, his YouTube channel and I subscribed. Awesome guy. Uh, so I think, I don't know if he sent a message or I saw something come up. Maybe it was just a notification. This is very fast. This was way too fast for the track last night. We are running, and this one's for you, slot car hub. We are running the pink 21400. Now, I got this down to, I think, a six... Four, I did get faster at the end. I was only doing six, eight, six, nines. And the orange version of this motor, which is the same RPM, it's the older version, they were getting around about, I think it was a six, one, almost a six flat. Now, let me tell you first. Uh, Slot Car Hub, him and his brother, the Scrivens, are very good drivers. Let's not take that away from them. Very fast. Once I started getting down to the six fours, I, I could see the potential in this motor, but I don't think I had this. I don't think I had what the old orange same version had in it. So this be six one. There you go. So I was three hundred seconds off, and I was pushing. But it also can come down to the car itself. This car compared to the, and these are different cars. Everything is different. So don't take this as oh you didn't know your cars. I actually I had to race this as well, which I. The thing we're doing, I was doing six eights in this, but it felt slower, real slow, but it, it wasn't. It's really fast. This had more power in it. It was just too fast for the track. Now, if I learnt my controller better 
and understood how to turn the power curve down to use the power that I could on the on the track that I had, so short straights, corners, then I think I could have brought the the times down. Not taken away from Slot Car Hub and his brother. They are wicked drivers, very fast boys. Like seriously, I'm so proud to be their friends. They are really, really fast. Watching them last night and some of the race the races there, mwah, awesome. This thing, if you haven't got one, an ASV, which is the Aston Martin, I bang on about Aston Martin all the time. It looks incredible. Can you see that green? It actually turns yellow. I'm going to swear for a tick. No, I'm not going to. I effing love slot cars, but I love what NSR are doing. That looks sick. And it was so fast. Potent, I would call it. But I've got to learn. And I was really quick at that. I actually didn't have a bad race. I had a really good race, but I just didn't have that. I, I couldn't get the edge. Um, and I don't think I can because the boys are really fast. The boys are really, really fast. Really fast. I won't lie. I will catch them one day. I'm going to be trying my hardest. Now that I'm back at, you know, trying to race as much as I can. Granted, I, I don't race at all, really. But th the boys are fast. Awesome car. I haven't received anything from NSR for a while. So I'm not sponsored or, or you know, supported all the time by them. But, <laughs> boy, that was fast. To the point where it's like, yeah, okay, I might actually actually go the, the slower motor or even turn the power curve right down. But once you start playing with the power curve and you don't get it right, with my controller, it starts throwing off a lot of the other settings. It can actually ruin your race. So I prefer to slow off, uh, maybe adjust the braking, adjust the coast and my, figure, my finger sensitivity. So it's sensitivity. That would then probably slow the car down, which it did. Uh, and it allowed me to use a little bit of the power. And that's when I got quicker, a lot quicker. Because I was doing seven twos at the start going, this is too quick. Like I just couldn't handle the beast. But then, you know, by race two or heat two, we had her dialed in, but not enough, not enough. The boys are quick. 33 of you, I'm here now. How do I say your name? Friends of the, Friends of the Floaties. <laughs> If you run NSR tie inserts on the ASV, it will go quicker again. Definitely. But don't make me cheat. It was out of the box. It was an out of the box race. So I licked the tires. And when I, when I say lick, please don't lick them. You can. Um, David, thank you so much. We have a new member. Thank you so much, David. I really appreciate that. And over the last week, um, I'm actually a little bit humbled. Thank you, David. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate that. Um, I'll add your name to... The list of the videos when I try and show the members' names um, as much as I can. So, thank you. Like, I think we've got 22 members now. So, I really appreciate it, guys. And that directly helps the channel. Yes, they are paying a fee, which I, I honestly appreciate that. And I do try and give them as much behind the scenes. I will do a talk for them personally about my findings on some of these cars after racing. I think that's my duty to do that to them. But the members do get a lot of behind the scenes stuff where I can do that. I try and give them a video daily, mostly during the week. The weekends is sort of family time. But where I find something interesting to share with them, they've seen this track before anyone. They knew I got it the day I got it. They saw it all. So thank you. Um, thanks, David. Welcome to the, the membership, mate. Thank you. And I will be updating some of, the, um, some of the icons too. So you'll be getting some personalized icons. I know that probably doesn't mean anything to anyone, but I think be able to sort of show yourself Yes, no, David, thank you so much, mate. I, I, um, I am extremely uh, honoured, mate. Thank you so much. And again, that does directly support the channel. So and just so you know, any, any of the stuff that comes to the channel, um, it uses you know, to upgrade items or uh, it, it's always going to benefit the channel. I actually have to upgrade my normal camera soon because it is getting old, which... That's on me. I don't mean I don't I don't ask for donations and that. So, but I'm just letting you guys know where I put my finances um, for the channel. And if there is anyone that does like David has, uh, I'll answer it in the tick. Legend. Um, I try and put it all back in. Either I buy a slot car or I, I I do something to the channel. Well, you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, you don't you don't have to donate. Please, guys, you don't you do uh, you don't have to do that. Thank you so much, mate. But you don't have to do that. I know I know you don't have to do that. You don't. But thank you so much. It's hard because I'm like, thank you, but please don't do that again. 
you don't have to do it. Uh, many people do, but you do not have to do that. YouTube is free. Um, it does help, but thank you so much. I don't know what to say. You stop it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know what to say. Ah, the fifth, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. What's he saying? So. No, no, no. That's more than enough. That's more than enough. No, mate. I'm. I thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Seriously, thank you. I don't. I don't. I, yeah, I don't know what to say. Thank you, man. Um, just watching is awesome. So thank you so much. You have helped. You have helped the channel, my man. Uh, everyone's been really good lately. Like we got the we got the track. Thank you so much, guys. Seriously, thank you. I um yeah yeah thank you. I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> You've choked me up a little bit. Let me read a comment so I can change so I can change the topic for a tick. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, I just want to change the read the comment. If you still have the sauce bottles, I was thinking when I raised RC, I squeeze the bottle. Suck. Yes. So I, I, I do have the sauce bottles and I will do that probably off camera and then get a lot of it done. Um, this is the most painful way to do it. Do not, do not, um, do not think this is the right way to do it. I want to answer, um, I don't know how to say your name, but I'm going to try and be as nice as I can. Uh, I'm going to call you the floatsy. Can I call you floatsy? Uh, mate, you know what that that has done? That has paid for the paintbrushes. So I went and got paintbrushes to paint the track. And I don't care if it's $3,000 or $1. Paintbrushes are paid for, so thank you. You're a good man. Thank you so much. You have now paid for my paintbrushes. So I do, I do appreciate that. If you guys got any questions about anything, let me know. I'm pretty open book. Of course, um, today I thought I'll talk about racing from last night because it was a, a really good blast. And whilst I do promote some brands and stuff and the stuff that I use, why not give you my opinion on some of the stuff that I use and I found last night? Uh, let's go back to talking tire inserts. Uh, thank you to the new member, and which is Dave. Let me see, is it another Dave? Uh, uh, the Fetzels, thank you, mate. And thank you, David, again. I appreciate that, guys. Um, with the tire inserts, that's a very good option. And of course, it's an option that's there to be done. But with the out of box racing last night, well, pretty much out of box, that you can do, you know, gluing in your motor pod. I probably could have worked on my axles. And I'm going to give you guys, it's not a really a secret, but it's something that I do with every car. And I didn't last night. I could. No, I appreciate it, man. I think you have. You have, like I said, don't worry about too little or too small. It's just incredible. You probably see a gun behind me because I was looking at colors to use for the track. And that's my son's Nerf gun. So I'm trying to get inspiration from everywhere. It's going to move around this side, Legends, and we'll keep going around the corner. It's actually looking good. Let's have a quick, let's have a quick lane check. I'm going to flip that around. So there we go. That's looking down. And of course, remember, you're not going to see the complete color. You're going to see, you know, half a centimeter in. So that's the colors. Oh, I think that looks good. I think that looks good. Uh, once we start painting here, of course, I'm going to be off camera probably doing this. You'll get, me, you'll get me coming live every now and then. But I'm a little bit nervous on how to do this because that's a long way across. So, yeah, that's going, to be a, that's going to be painstaking. So what I will do is, and someone said about the sauce bottles before, what I will be doing is I will use a fresh sauce bottle and I will do either heat up the paint so the paint becomes more of a liquid and I'll pour it in and then I will actually start sourcing the parts that I can't really reach because then I can just drag a brush through. It might get a little bit messy, but at least I can get the paint in there a lot easier. So I will go back to using these. Thanks, Dave. I think I think it does. It's I do want to, and I was saying this before, if you just joined the stream, thank you. I do want to put some blacking where the cars would make marks. Of course, they're not going to. This may rubber up a little bit. Uh, for racing, it will. It will rubber down. But I don't think you're going to get, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think you're going to get too much blackening over the track. But I'm thinking about doing a nice coating of uh, texture, uh, I keep saying texture, of detail, but I don't know yet because it's a lot of work. Um, I don't know. But we can always do that later. Uh, let me put you back down. Let's just keep painting because we're getting some stuff in here. I'll probably keep going for a bit. There's 37 of you. Uh, you must be like me, have no life. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, 
someone hit me with one. Let's let's get another topic going. And whilst I'm thinking, we'll talk more. What what cars are some of you really wanting to see? What what can't you wait to see? And I'll go first because I remember I made a post, and I did not know this. And this is freaky. It's happened a lot. I did a post about the um um. I don't even know what the car is now. <laughs> I made the post, I swear. Uh, I actually tagged SRC. I'm a big supporter of SRC. I used to be on their, their team. Uh, I'm going to put this, this down because you can't really see what I'm saying. So um, I used to be on... I am still Team SRC. I love them to bits, but I used to be physically. G'day, Outlaw Paints sent me. Oh, mate, Outlaw Paints is incredible. You, you've got to support them. They're Aussie. We'll talk about that in a tick. Um, I used to actually be physically on the SRC's webpage as my face, as Travis, not as that slut car guy. I was that car guy, but it was pretty much saying I was an ambassador from Australia. And for the 2024 season, uh, there were some changes made, so I'm, I'm not on the team uh, officially. So you might not see many review copies, which is which we'll try and change that next year. Um, of course, these companies can't afford you know, to send everyone something, and I understand that. But I will try and make that change next year so we can actually work together again. Love their stuff. But anyways, even when I wasn't a part of the team this year, I did tag them in on a car that I wish they did, and it's now coming out. I kind of wish, I kind of wish it was them as well. I hope they can maybe borrow the mold because there's a lot of mold borrowing. I, of course, it costs you money, but and I'll, I'll give an example in a tick because it's happened with this car, the Yaris, the Yaris GR rally car looks awesome. Come on, I know a lot of people think there's a lot going on with it. You know, it's, it's a it's a body kit and a half. That's just what it is. Um, anyways, so Avant slot, I believe it was. Did I see that right today? And I think it was SCX have both released a version of that car. Whether they're sharing mold, I don't know. I'm guessing I can find out. Uh, I don't know. Let's stop looking at me for a tick and you can look at what I'm doing down here. Uh, but they're doing that car. I kind of wish SRC might jump on and say, hey, guys, can we have a crack at that too? So they can add their chrono slash original flair to it. If you don't know much about SRC, you know, I'll grab some cars the next live. I'll get two of their cars out and show you the difference. Uh, they do an original and a chrono series. The original is a high detailed slot car. Let's call it a model as well that performs just as good as the chrono. The main differences with the chrono and the original is how the details applied. The original has, let's use the Lancia Delta as a, as a, a model that they've done. The back compartment with the, the rear engine, all the bells and whistles, there's a proper model section inside the actual car itself where the shell goes over that details the real motor, uh, roll cage. Um, I'll go grab it in the tick, it's stunning. Then the Chrono, they go back to using that poly, poly form, I think it's called, plastic, uh, I guess, insert that shows minor details, so weight saving. Uh, that's what they do with the two series. I would love for them to get their hands on that car and do both a chrono and an original. I'd love to see their chrono, which is the, the race version, uh, you know, lighter on the detail, but their original would look, oh my God, they do a really good job. And if you haven't got an SRC car, and I, I'm telling you now, you won't see them much on the channel when it comes to me reviewing for them. It just won't, I don't think it's happening for 2024. Please still support them. They're a small company. They've got a lot of cars that should have come out already, but of course, being a small company, they're working on it. They've got some really good plans. So even though they're not fully supporting the channel, please get behind them and support them because I started with SRC about seven years ago on Instagram. I was shooting diecast cars back then on Instagram. I actually had a big uh, Instagram page for diecast cars and I added them to it because I, I love my slot cars and that's how we struck up a friendship. They sent me a lot of review stuff back in the first days of the channel um, and of course, with COVID and financial issues, they've got to watch what they do with their models and sending it to Australia, unfortunately for me, it, it is expensive. So please still support them. And I'll try and get them back on board uh, for hopefully the 2025 season because they've got some really cool cars coming. 
All right, I'm going to read some comments because I've asked you a question about what your car is. Oh, that's awesome. I could contribute. Yeah, it looks great. I have, I have all <laughs> twelve thirty p.m. I have all Arvo, mate. Do you? I have no life. Me too, Nathan. G'day, Outlaw Paints sent me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm going to call you B Rat. Thanks, man. He's a good. He's a he's a true Aussie, and you his stuff is on the channel. He's an absolute legend. I don't know your slot cars, and I'm still kind of waiting. Oh, I missed that. On a friend to send me what they want to send me. Ooh, let us know once you know. Revo slot Camaro, please. Yes. Ah, uh, because they've done the Revo, they've done the BRM Camaro. Correct me if I'm wrong, slot car hub. But they've done the the Bevo, the Bevo, the Bevo slot, the the BRM Camaro. So it's not as easily just just to scale it down. But it should it should happen. Let's watch this space. I'll actually I'll, I'll email them today. F ones, I'm with you. Slot car daddy, I'm with you, my man. I'm with you, F1s, all day. I like the Ford GT40 when it comes to cars, so I want to want one to sell as a slot car. Oh, yes, please. Oh, there's a fair few GT40s. So I know you're probably new to the, the it sounds like you're new to the F1, uh, the slot car world, uh, Floatzel. I'm going to call you Floatzel. I believe, I think, Slot It did a GT40. I think you'll find it in, and help me chat, definitely Slot It. Did Scale Electric do one? Yes, they did as well. Carrera did one. There's a fair few out there. So a lot of the brands jumped on it. A lot of, yes, the, mate, a lot of the brands have done that model. So please search them up. Search Slot Car GT40 and you'll find a lot of brands that, that do sell it. Awesome, awesome looking car. Uh, yes, Camaro, GT40 is a great runner. Oh, nice. So it's all a good race car. Yes. Uh, does anyone... Does anyone do either the Alan Grice or Dick Johnson NASCAR from the... No, but again, chat, because there's a lot of people that would know. I believe there is a there is a colder Scalatrix set with Dick Johnson car, and they're, they're not the car you're thinking, but they did do a colder, which I almost purchased that I should have. It's expensive now, but Scalatrix did do a colder park set and i think it was for it was for the thunderdome i think it was called yeah it was called the thunderdome set but it wasn't those exact cars that you're talking about but it was the dick johnson car livery awesome set look it up i'll add that to the news on friday because that's going to be set of the week eh. oh yeah well there you go slot car hub's got it see i told you i was wrong <laughs> i told you i didn't get it right so let's just finish this green section off here and then I think we're going to go back to doing some orange. There's still 35, so I'll keep going if you guys are happy for me to keep going because I'm actually getting some traction here. Uh, someone asked me a question. I, I don't think I answered it. Let me go back to the chat quickly. I'm going to change colors. Got it for Christmas. Uh, no, it's, I'm sure someone... I have no life. Me too. Uh, no, I can't see it. All right, let's change over to orange. I'm going to get a new brush. I'm going to cover up this. So I'm going to do some more orange now because we haven't completed the orange all the way down. So that gives me a reason to keep talking to you, legends. Thanks, mate. I appreciate the donation. Thank you so much, man. And welcome to the hobby. It sounds like you're new. Uh, there's a lot of great people in here that will help you. So stay with the hobby. It's really, really good. Cheers, mate, and be safe. So what's this one? Fireside. <laughs> I'll probably go for another 20 minutes, Legends, because I'm actually getting some stuff done here. So thank you for joining me. It is 2.30. The pre-race will start, or the pre, the preamble for the F1s will start at 4. So I do want to be ready for about 4-ish. Uh, let's put that paintbrush away for now. And let's go with orange. I like the orange. Let's get some orange done. So... I'll get you guys to come here because I'll start from the top and work my way down. Yes, yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward. I know, and thanks for being so helpful, guys. Oh, you're a legend, mate. Thank you so much. No, mate, the community is incredible. Incredible. And thanks for helping, guys. And it's like a hub. Thanks for answering about the uh, NASCAR Calder Park, I should say. Let's bring him in for a tick. So I was going to say something about what I, what I want to see car-wise. Now, I can't remember now. I actually had I had something I wanted to say about... Oh, yeah, so let's talk AFX. I know not everyone's into HO, but bear with me. 
I love it. I think HO is awesome. Um, I do know, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I do know the next F1 stuff. Um, I already know it. The, the stuff that's been signed off. There is stuff in the works, but I know I know of what is signed off. Now, if you are a collector of F1, you're probably going to want to keep your eyes on AFX. If you don't race AFX, that's cool. If you are a collector of F1s, you're going to want to keep your eye on AFX because if what I know is true, which they've told me, um, I actually I can the what I know is true. Epic. 2025, if 2024 has the support that they need, I guarantee you 2025 is going to be bigger and better for, for AFX and they are pushing for the stars. So very exciting. I know it's HO. I mean, not everyone likes HO. I think it's incredible. If you haven't tried HO, get a little set, take the magnet out and have a blast. Do the same that you would to a bigger car. Give the tyres a lick. Uh, definitely take the magnet out. You might find they're a bit tail happy, so you're going to need to put some bit of uh, get stuck into the tyres a little bit. It's a lot of fun. And just turn the power down. Get a power a adjustable power supply and just don't put it on. You can get one from AFX. It's a beginner, expert, uh, beginner, intermediate, and expert. Just chuck it on intermediate. So then you actually have a decent race. It's not just sticking to the track because, yes, they can just be a, a very fast magnet, but take that out. Get rid of it. So they've got some really good stuff when it comes to F1s. Uh, I can't say anything further from that, but if you live in Australia, get ready because – just get ready. <laughs> if everything's ready. Okay, I, I, that's probably all I should say. Um, a lot of companies, which I'm very proud to say this, are focusing a lot of their stuff for Australia as well. We have a lot of unique, I guess, tracks when it comes to Bathurst. We got a lot, that's not just AFX. I'm not talking about them now in general. Uh, we have a lot of unique cars that we've built over the time. We've got a lot of different variations. So you will see probably an Australian flair with the slot car world as well. And, of course, uh, JDM is here to stay. JDM is here to stay. If they stop making JDM cars, I think we can say it's going to go back to you know Ford Escorts, which I love, but it's going to, it can't go back to running the same moulds year on out. It has to change has to change. Uh, I would even say, oh, this is what I want to say to you. So here's my idea. Run it by us. I think just to get longevity out of the models as well, I'm a big street car fan. I love race cars, but give me a street car any day of the week. Uh, give me a multiple colors. That should happen anyways because they get longevity out of the model. But at least with every model that they run that is a street car as well, I think they should try and get the licensing for that that brand's color. So let's use let's use Aston Martin, and they've got the I think they've got Aston Martin green now. It used to be British green, which I think they still use that, but I believe they've got Aston Martin green. Release this car NSR with no livery, looking like that, but release it in their traditional color for the brand. So you've got Ferrari in there. I think it's Mon is it Monza red, uh, you know Lamborghini. They normally have. You, know, you do it in Galado blue or whatever the color is that they 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 uh, hold dear to their heart and release with the run of the race cars the car color of that brand and I think that I think that would sell I'll buy it I mean it just adds it to the list of cars that will go with it and also with the packaging maybe just have the logo of the brand in the back so you know, Aston Martin Ferrari and have it as not a collector's piece but it's just that's the that's the head. We'd love to see more street cars. Me too, man. Scott, me too. But this will be like the the start of that run. So we've got the – this is called ASV, so I don't think they can use the Aston Martin name. I don't know. Uh, but if they did this in, in British Racing Green and then the other cars – so the catalogue, this is British Racing Green, and then the other cars like this one are beside it, that's the lead car. comes out in the colour of the, of the brand – and then all the race cars come out and do that with every run of cars. And you'll probably find they'll sell them. Like that's just another car that they can stick in a packet and get it out to us. And I, I would like to see that. That's just me though. I'm, I, I do like street cars. If you agree, let me know. I'm actually going to make a video on it because I've done some videos predicting what should happen. And it actually has. Uh, the Revo slots, I won't take any 
I will not take any credit for this because it's not just me that was asking for them, but I'm still sitting on the email that I sent Revo over two years ago now. Guys, please, please do the 510. And that was to BRM, which is Revo. Uh, and I asked for BRM or Revo. And I got back, the email I got back, which is cute because I do like, I mean, I'm not saying the guys did the wrong thing, but obviously they were doing it. I, we got back, I got back an email saying, we will think about it. What's your thoughts on it? Will it sell? And of course, I was very big on JDM. And I did make a video on this and uh, two years ago. And I knew what they were making now, which is the 240Z. I already knew about that because they did say, no, no, we've got this in the pipeline. So we'll use that as the test bed. They obviously understood because of you guys and other everyone else asked for it in the comments that they obviously got out the 510 before they got out the 240. And that's just what happens when it comes to, I think I've got visitors. Two seconds, chat. What's going on? Okie dokie. Okay, awesome. Hold on to sort of agree, Scott. Would love to do, would love to see more street cars. Yeah, HJ wagon. There is, um, there is a lot of 3D, there is a lot of 3D printers out there. So also, uh, I'll, give it, I'll give Outlaw Slots a shout here because they're the ones that directed me to it when I was first there. I went to the Melbourne Toy Fair this week, uh, this year, which was really good. It was, wasn't just slot cars. I think, obviously, there was hardly any, any slot cars. Um, but I got to speaking with the diecast car companies and some of those use, have the rights and distribution for slot cars. And I've got a really good understanding of why they make certain cars. So let me move you guys around the other side whilst I'm talking. And DOA do some Holden kits. And at the moment, if you really want to, you go to Outlaw Slots and they will do, they are building up their own drag cars out of those kits and selling them as ready to run kits. They are incredible. So if you do want Holdens, the panel vans, Look at DOA, they do the plastic kits, but also look at some of the shops like Outlaw. They are putting them together for you and selling them. Of course, you've got to pay for them and they look incredible. And I will do a review. I did ask him, can I review one at the shop? And they said, yes. So I will review one probably this week as a drag car. And yes, I'll go drag racing, get ready to see a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> uh, but that's just another way that the hobby, you just don't need to rely on the big brands to make that car. So keep your mind open. I will do some more of those kind of reviews because there's a lot of those cars out there that we just don't know. Also, if Slot Car Hub's in the chat and he's probably already gone, uh, let me have a quick look. Good to go, fellas. Great chat, Travis. Cheers, mate. Yes, guys, if you've got to go, please go. I'm just waffling on now and I've probably got another 10 minutes in me. Uh, I'm just trying to get some painting done whilst we waffle. Uh, when I was at the racing last night, one of the boys showed me the again the DOA models which are are being pushed into the slot car world. These are a plastic 124 kit, and I believe MJK are releasing those as a ready to run car as well. Yes, MJK the tire company. I will reach out to them. They're in Adelaide, and I I did not know about this. I'll get as much news and advice and ideas from them around this and present it to you hopefully this week. And if I can get a review copy of the car, because I will be going drag racing. I think drag racing is a very big part of our hobby. And that's a lot of scratch building comes into that, which I want to learn that. Um, and let me, <laughs> I can't say much because when I was at Outlaw, they showed me behind the curtains at Outlaw Slots. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes that people don't know. And I'm not going to say it yet because uh, Haley and the team aren't ready to, to release some stuff. But these, these guys are, they're the real deal. You're going to see some really cool stuff coming from them. Really cool stuff. Um, and I'm going to hopefully jump on board with them and do some collaborations when it comes to some stuff. Uh, not reviews, but some stuff. Some stuff. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but they're just trying to fine-tune some of their stuff. <laughs> I can't tell you. Uh, to make sure that it's, it's ready. Uh, but, yeah, check it out. Also, a good friend of the channel, uh, Resin Slots, Lee, uh, I don't think they're pumping out much kits at the moment um, due to, to f family stuff, which I, I hope he's doing well. But he also can get cars, kits, prints. Um, there's plenty of people out there. Jump on Facebook, look them up. You might have to do a bit of hard work yourself 
or you can pay sometimes these people to finish the car for you at a premium, but then the car is done. A really good friend of the channel, uh, Pete Shepard, he's in the UK. He also obviously makes cars that he likes, you know, the MGs, some really, the Fire, some really nice cars. And again, we probably wouldn't see those again in the slot car world if it wasn't for people like Pete putting his hard-earned you know, money and time into building these cars and selling them as kits. Really cool. I wish, I wish Revo would do an R32. I've asked them. I, I, I won't lie to you. I've sent Revo numerous lists of cars. That one's not much of a risk. It might be now because it's already been done by Slotted, uh, Carrera. And I'll, I'll, let's talk about that as well because I have requested some stuff from Carrera too. Um, so, yes, I would love to see Revo do JDM more. They need to. They're very good at doing what they're doing. I'm keen to get started in Scratch Built. Can you stand down a little bit, buddy? Scratch Built. I thought the HQ Monero last night was a kit brought from Bonza to so ask. What... No, I, but I don't think it was. Whoever, and that I was racing with John last night, right? uh, I was told that that was an MJK ready to run car. MJK released it. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I got told last night. I know nothing about MJK doing cars, but I do know that Outlaw Slots is selling DOA kits affixed to a beautiful chassis, drag racing, and you can buy them. So look up DOA, look up the kits. You can either buy the kits yourself or you can buy the ready-to-run car, drag car, from um, Outlaw Slots. Awesome-looking things. I will do a review on one of them. I'll see if I can put one of those down the track for you. If I smash it, I'm up for a bit of money. <laughs> ah, let's talk. Yeah, so, and we'll finish up very soon. We're talking um, R32 by Revo. I think Revo should should do a lot more than just that. It should do a lot more JDM cars. Uh, we still haven't got the 300ZX, which was a really good car. You need to do a lot of street colors with some of these cars. There is plenty of liveries for R32s out there, but remember, Slotit's done one, um, and HPI did one, and... Uh, so yeah, the most recent was Slotted and Carrera. If I've forgotten anyone, let me know. With the Carrera one, that is still sitting on the shelf. And when I visited Carrera numerous times in Austria, but when I actually sat with the designer and said, what are you doing with those molds? You've got four JDM cars. We've got the AE86, Toyota Corolla. You've got the R32 Skyline. You've got the RX-7 FD and the RX-7 FC. So two different RX-7 chassis. We haven't seen them since the initial D cars and we probably weren't going to see them again. I've requested and I'm going to do it again and I hope it's in the 2025 catalog. I don't know. If I don't see it next year, I'll be asking why because they've got the mold. It's sitting there. It's been paid for. We've got HKS. We've got, I've sent them numerous liveries that they can do on all those cars, which I think would sell. They would sell very well. Um, so what's your space? We might get some JDM. And I want to see it themed. The initial D slip, the way they theme those cars, the way you purchase them was an experience. Came with a figure. Do it again. They sold out. And then now they get catching a pretty penny. So I think, yeah, I think we, we're going to see some more stuff. If I do find out, I won't be able to tell you. <laughs> but I will tell you eventually. But anyways, yes. So behind the scenes, I'm requesting a lot of stuff that, I mean, I've got to siphon through a lot of, please make this, please make that, because I know looking at market research, a lot of cars just won't sell in the mass market. They're better in the 3D printed world. It's just how it is because even the AT, the Alpha GTV, I want that car and it's now being done by Fly. That is really cool. I, I believe Slotted or Revo need to do that so it can race against the Datto and that's just what they have to do. They've got to build the class. If you build it, people will buy it. So I'm glad that Fly has done the Alpha it's not JDM, but it's definitely left field. Um, another car that I think was a really smart move, and we don't really see much of it now, was the Renault, what's it called? Advanced Slot did it as well. It's got the flat headlights at the front. It's a V6. Let me have a look. I don't think. Bonza site just now says DDA, MGK, Moot. Can you tell us the price? Because if it's if it's around the forty to fifty dollar mark, that's just the kit with no car. Can you tell me what that price is, buddy? And I'll be able to tell you if that's the kit, if that's the full car. Because if it's got MJK's name in front of it, 
I'm going to tell you, that's going to be a ready-to-run car because they've built that up with their own chassis. Uh, it's a heavy chassis. It's very heavy. It's metal, almost back to the vintage days. I didn't get to drive it. I did see it getting driven last night, but it was highly detailed. Really cool. Kit, so 275. There you go. So MJK, and I'll, I'll do a shout-out for Bonza this week on the news because I did not know about that. MJK are doing a ready-to-run 124-scale car using the DOA kit, which is exciting. It's really exciting. DOA is a big die-cast car brand in Australia, model kit brand, and they've come together. Look at that. Look at that. Well, there you go. Well, on that note, we're about to get to the end of this corner, and I want to say thank you to everyone that has watched. We've done an hour and 40. I think that's enough. I do appreciate you all. There's still 30 in the chat. Um, cheers for keeping me company. You will see me go live, and let's have a quick look at it together before we go. You can see we've kind of got up to. Uh, I think the colours are that green is definitely now green. It's representing the Australian racing colours when we do racing in sports, and the orange is just because I liked it. <laughs> so there we go. We've got to here. Uh, I think the next chat we do, which might be later on today or tomorrow, I will start up here because then I can actually still talk to you guys get it around the corner, but off camera, I think I'll try and get all this middle section done. Uh, an update to the braid. I will be ordering braid this week. I will get it this week. I will lay the braid this week. I could pretty much, no, I couldn't. Yes, I could. I could wire up a controller this week and drive a lane. So we, you might actually get some track action by the end of the week. That's exciting. So stay tuned. Cheers, everyone. Um, thank you to the new members as well, or member. And thank you very much for the donation as well. Uh, little or small, it does help the channel. That small donation bought three of those paintbrushes for me. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. But as always, if that's okay, please subscribe, look after yourselves, take care, bye. But thanks for joining me, guys. And I'll see you later. And good luck, Oscar Piastri. Let's go, boy. Let's go. Cheers, guys. Bye. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs>